Welcome everyone to St Andrews for this service of thanksgiving and remembrance. It's great to see you here uh, this afternoon. We invite you to use this time for your own thoughts and for your own remembrances. And as we remember loved ones together, we will um, sing, sort of, we'll hum, and we'll reflect on the words of the songs. Uh, we'll also be reflecting on God's word and uh, what he has to say to us. And towards the end, there'll be an act of remembrance. It's All Saints Day today, and so I pray for us as we start the Collect for All Saints. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age as we rejoice in the faith of your saints. Inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And thank you, dear Lord, for giving us the chance this afternoon to come together to remember our loved ones no longer with us. And again, to give thanks for their lives lived. We thank you too that we can turn to you in our times of loss and find your comfort. Amen. Uh, all of our songs and the words for them are on the sheets that hopefully you have a copy of in front of you. And our first is for all the saints. Please stand with me.
Please do sit. We take this opportunity now to come to God and acknowledge our frailty, that frailty which leads to failure. We fail to love God with all our heart, soul and strength and mind. We fail to love our neighbour as ourselves. We're invited to come to God in confession, knowing that he is a God who loves to restore us both to our neighbour and to himself. So calling to mind our sin and asking for God's forgiveness, I invite you to join with me as we pray the words of the confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, in what we have done, in our poverty soul, and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, said, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. The Bible tells us, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Indeed, he sent his one and only Son to die on the cross for us, and so as we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us and purify us from all unrighteousness. Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son and the power of your Spirit. Please cleanse us of our sin and set us on your path afresh. Amen. Sue is going to be bringing us our first reading. First reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 to 25. New heavens and a new earth. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem, and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and eat others and others eat. For as the days of a tree so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labour in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord. They and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Tim picks up the theme of that reading of what is to come uh, for those who trust in God 
a great future of great rejoicing and of great provision that stands together from glory to glory advancing. We praise thee, O Lord. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 to 3 and 8 to 16. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen will not be made out of what is visible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the Promised Land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so, from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as sound on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised, they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. And if they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city from them. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It was the great scientist uh, Isaac Newton who said, If I have seen farther than others, it's because I have stood on the shoulders of giants. He wasn't probably the first person to say it, but he's most famous for having said it. Because he was reminding um, the people that he was speaking to of the debt that he and they owed to others. And as we're gathered here this afternoon, we're here in part to acknowledge that debt that we owe to those who have gone before to those others who have given us so much. Somewhat unkindly, um, people today accuse millennials, um, or the snowflake generation, of uh, being people who feel that they're entitled to things. Well, uh, if there is that atmosphere of entitlement, I must say that uh, I must confess to having the same thing as well. When I was a child, I uh, took it for granted that uh, when I needed uh, tooth extracting or uh, filling, that uh, that would be done by the NHS. Or that when I wasn't uh, very well with horrible diseases that children get, that uh, I could go to uh, the lovely snowy-haired uh, Dr. McDonnell and be treated by him. I never thanked once uh, Mr. Attlee or uh, any of the other people who had been responsible for bringing the National Health Service uh, into being. I just thought I was entitled to it. And the same thing happened uh, when I got a little bit older and uh, found that uh, if you passed the 11 plus, goodness, you could go to a grammar school. And that if you got your A-levels, then people would give you money so that you could go and study for a degree. I never once thanked Mr. Beveridge or R.A. Butler um, that they had brought about the education system that I was benefiting from. I just took it for granted. But now that I'm older, and a bit wiser, I know that I owe a huge debt to people like that who move mountains in order to provide the way that ordinary people could receive medical treatment and education without cost to themselves. But it wasn't only that. When I was a child, um, I was in a single parent family before the term was ever thought of. One day one of my uncles said to me when I was grown up, he must have had an awfully sad childhood. And I looked at him thinking that he couldn't possibly be uh, talking to the right person. I'd had a wonderful childhood. I'd been surrounded by an army of uncles and aunts and relatives and friends and families of friends and shopkeepers and people. Um, who cared for me, and I just took it for granted. But I'm the person that I am today because of what they gave me generously. In our reading that we just had from Hebrews, the people who were the recipients of the letter were up against it. They were faced by troubles and trials. Their friends and relatives, uh, their companions in the faith had been unjustly thrown into prison. They themselves had uh, had their houses ransacked and their property destroyed. And they were in danger of death. And they were thinking that uh, if this was the cost of faith, maybe this was the time uh, to give it up. Uh, the writer of Hebrews said to them, come on. You are standing on the shoulders of giants. Look at these people of faith. Look at Abraham. He didn't know where he was going. 
but he trusted God implicitly that he would guide him. Look at Noah, mocked and uh, abused by his relatives, undertaking a task that seemed absolutely futile. Look at Enoch who was a great man of great faith. And look at all the others, those who were thrown to wild animals, those who uh, were killed. These were people with faith, and they kept on, in circumstances like you, he was saying, because of their faith in God, their trust in what he could do for them, and have your eyes not just on what is in front of you, but have your eyes on the prize of what is to come. Because that is the reality, and not what you have now. So look at their example. Follow their example. And if uh, today um, you, like me, are sitting here uh, thinking that um, you wish you could uh, wind the clock back and say thank you, uh, to all the people who have helped you be what you are and somehow you never got around to saying it. If you find yourself, as I do sometimes, like that, feeling like that, don't worry about what you should have said to them and didn't. Try to emulate what they gave to you, whatever it was, whether it was love, deep hospitality, companionship in time of difficulty, teaching you some skill or another, or just simply sharing their life with you. Try and do that for others. If Abraham had faith, well, have faith like his. If that person gave you this rich gift, well, try and pass on that gift to others. But the writer of Hebrews didn't stop there by just saying, follow the example of those who have given so much. He pointed them on to Jesus. Because he said, Jesus suffered, so don't expect that you won't, but he didn't just say, follow his example of suffering. He pointed to Jesus as what he called the author and finisher of faith. Because Jesus wasn't just the person who gave an example of suffering, like some of the other people uh, in that uh, hall of fame that there is in Hebrews 11. Jesus was the one who actually made a way for people to have renewed fellowship with God. He gave his life so that we might have life. He gave his life on the cross and was resurrected so that we might know that death was not the end, but the gateway to real life. He gave his life on the cross so that we might be forgiven and experience now life more abundant, as Jesus called it, and in the future, life eternal. So Jesus was the trailblazer, the one who makes a way. With the National Health Service and with the Education Service, if uh, they had just been there and I'd never used them, then they would have been irrelevant and I would have been the poorer. I had to actually pitch up at the doctors or the dentist. I had actually to go to school. I had actually to do the exams. I had to do something about it. And that's like that uh, with what Jesus has done for us. His sufferings on the cross, we have to accept and take uh, for ourselves to believe personally that he has died for us before what he has done becomes effective in our lives. 
I want to uh, end with extracts from two poems that perhaps uh, you are familiar with. One is the opening line from Dylan Thomas's verse uh, in the face of his father's death where he says, do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And in our attitude towards death, rage isn't inappropriate. It is what the Bible calls the last enemy. It is painful. It is horrible. It is deadly but it is not the end. When Walter Raleigh uh, was in the uh, cell condemned in the tower, it said that the night before his execution, he wrote in his diary these words, even such is time that takes in trust our youth, our joys, our all we have, and pays us but with earth and dust. But from this grave, this earth, this dust, my God will raise me up, I trust. Let's bow our heads in a moment of prayer. God, our Father, we thank you for the example of those who have gone before. We thank you most of all for the sacrifice of Jesus, who died so that we might have life that nothing can destroy. Plant in us, we pray, the seeds of that life, and may they blossom and bear fruit in our lives. To the glory of his name. Amen. We stand to sing Lord of all hope.
Please do sit. I'm now going to light a candle for our time of remembrance, and uh, during that time of remembrance, I'll uh, be reading out uh, the names that we've been um, uh, given to read out here, and then I shall invite anyone else to say out loud any names of people that you're remembering today. thankfulness and in hope. Let's continue to listen to these words read for us as we reflect. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on your side. 
bear patiently the cross of grief and pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul. Your best, your heavenly friend through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul. Your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be clear at last. Be still, my soul. The waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Be still, my soul. The hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord. Then disappointment, grief and fear are gone. Sorrow forgotten, love's pure joy restored. Be still, my soul when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray this day in hope. We pray in trust. We pray in sadness. We pray with faith. Thank you for the days that have been lived we entrust the past to your mercy. Thank you for this day today. Help us to rely in the present in your love. Thank you for the days that are to come. Help us entrust the future to your wisdom. As we remember those who have passed, let their memory never fade, but their lives be an encouragement to us this day and each day. Dearest Jesus, who wept at the death of your friend and taught that they who mourn shall be comforted, grant us the comfort of your presence in our loss. Send your Holy Spirit to direct us. Let your Spirit give us courage and bring your peace. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that in all you might, so that you, through your death, might offer us a chance to be saved and pass from death into new life. Hear our prayers. Look with love on your people who mourn, and this day remember those whom they love. You alone are holy and compassionate, forgiving and eternal. By the merit of your death, forgive our sins and open the gates of life to those who trust in you, that they might have light, joy, peace and future hope. Eternal God and Father, we pray, in the name of Jesus, who is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I give thee my hands to do thy work. I give thee my feet to go thy way. I give thee my eyes to see as thou seest. I give thee my tongue to speak thy words. I give thee my mind that thou may think in me. I give thee my spirit, that thou may pray in me. 
Above all, I give thee my heart, that thou might love in me. I give thee my whole self, that thou may grow in me. I hand over to thy care, Lord, my soul and body, my prayers and my hopes, my health and my work, my life and my death, my parents and my family, my friends and my neighbours, those who are close and those who have departed, my country and all mankind, today and always. Amen. We pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We stand and sing, Abide with me. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Can I invite you please to sit and as we exit the building, please, we'll follow our one-way system, which is around uh, this way. But please feel free to stay for a moment as long as you like. Um, and then follow us as we head out to this way.
on Laverstock Downs Those blissful hours spent wandering around For those were the days when countries weren't free When petrol was rationed, no cars, just our bikes Laverstock Downs, cycling the hedgerows Laverstock Downs, walking with you Lava stock downs, lava stock downs. We went on red buses for taxis with few, and trains full of soldiers going God only knew. But for us children who had not a care. It was lava stock downs, and what did we find there? Lava stock downs, picking the blackberries. Lava stock downs, walking with you. Lava stock downs, lava stock downs. Butterflies dancing through. Sweet scented flowers and grasshoppers clinging to green bladed towers. We lie in long grasses, we tickle our toes, and baskets we loaded with black breeze and slows. Lava stock down, sun slowly setting. Lava stock down, holding my hand. Lava stock downs, lava stock downs. Then back home to Granny's for her to begin the night's preparation for her precious slow gin. For Christmas will come, and we hope it's all right, for it makes all the grown ups so merry. Stock down, snow gently falling, covering the fields as far as the spire. Lava stock down, lava stock down. Some sixty years later, I walk the same fields, I trod the same footprints, the same grass. It's now that I know the bond that we share. You read me your poems, the same girl walks there. Lava stock downs, climbing the hillside. Lava stock downs, you holding my hand. Lava stock downs.